people with limitations don't have to stop doing things. They just have to do things a little bit differently. Cross Mountain Recreation Therapists begin um, providing adaptive ski lessons to um, the students and clients of the rehab center and school um, starting in 1990. And then with a vision of making accessible snow sports programs available to the people with disabilities in the greater community. Um, and through this vision, we had a partnership with a nonprofit out of Peterborough, the Under One Roof program, um, and the partnership with Crotchy Mountain, CMARS became a reality. Um, and, and since that reality, it's, we've shown, we've had huge amount of growth. Um, in 2007, we did 200 lessons, or 200 hours of lessons, and now we've grown to 1,200 hours of lessons and expanded our program from snow sports to now include hiking programs, adaptive kayaking, adaptive cycling, and also target shooting. It's on. Yes, well. I beat you, Tom. What? I beat you. I know you beat me, son of a gun. You're always <laughs> you're too good for me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yep. I beat wants yeah. to be able to provide um, accessible recreational sports for people of all abilities. We have a 1,400-acre campus that um, you know, allows us to provide some variety of recreational activities. And we see our vision in the future. We hope to perhaps um, do an adaptive rock climbing program or adaptive golf. Um, we've talked about adaptive skating. So those are all possibilities. How do you feel after working with clients? Awesome. Period. The only way I could describe it is I just feel, it just feels great. Summing it up, I feel great. Always feel better than when I came in. No matter what frame of mind I come in with, I'm leaving uh, in a different place for sure. You feel a sense of accomplishment, um, a sense of, a huge sense of joy, and the parents are usually always very happy and it's just such a great feeling. <laughs> It's, it's always good. Um, I've loved to ski and you know just it doesn't it doesn't feel like anything other than another day with a ski buddy. Uh, we go out, we have fun and uh, at the end of the day it's always good. You know it's a it's a great experience. I feel like every day we have a success story at Sea Mars. It, it's hard to leave without feeling a little bit renewed physically, emotionally. It's a really positive experience. It feels incredible to give that gift of skiing to someone who may or may not otherwise have ever skied or thought they could ski, and especially as a parent, seeing the looks in the parents' eyes when they see their son or their daughter actually skiing for the first time. It brings me back to the feeling I had the first time I watched my daughter ski for the very first time, so it's very rewarding. My name's Jeff Burnett, and this is my son, Andrew. I'm the uh, assistant director of the CMARS program and I uh, have been working with the program for a number of years and Andrew is one of the, our students and he has been with them for quite a few years as well. We were actually at Crotchet Mountain Ski Area. I have another son that's a couple years younger than Andrew and we were I was teaching him how to ski when he was three or four and I had brought Andrew along and Andrew was sitting in a little sled 
that we used on the magic carpet and they uh, one of the lift operators mentioned to us that there was a program for kids like Andrew that had just started up and that's how we first heard about it and we got a phone number for Molly Hajar and connected with her and it all went from there. Mars is able to get anybody with any limitation of any capacity out on the slopes. That's what I like about Sea Mars. Sea Mars is not just you know, it's it's not structured to fit one kind of person. It's structured to fit many different limitations, many different kinds of people, of whether it be cognitive issues, whether it be communication issues. The instructors will let you be your own person at some point so they'll tell you when they don't want you to but i like cmars because it's a family it's it's hard it, you really you don't think about it but when you come in here today week after week and then year after year you get to learn the people and you're all you really it, it's not a professional relationship it's you're a bunch of friends and you're out skiing and you get to know everybody. And the better you know people, the better you can ski, and the more fun you have. My, my lead instructor is usually uh, Mick Brown, and I have to be related to you. And my second is usually Dan Sousa. Dan Sousa is a, an adaptive skier here. He's, uh, believe it or not, he skis on a mono ski. And he's, uh, he does really well, he rips it up. And, uh, but I've skied with uh, Kristen Harris, who is involved in the program. I ski with uh, just about everybody here from, uh, as far as leads, just depending on the day. And I, I try to ski with as many people as I can. I never, I won't stick to one certain group. I want to get to know everybody and, you know, learn how they ski so they can learn how I ski. There's a, there's a language, both spoken and unspoken, that happens between Corey and I. A lot of what happens with me, it's responding to what Corey's doing. Corey is a very abled skier. So I just need to kind of pick up the pieces here and there when, when it's not happening 100% for him. I read his body language. One of the key things that, that I kind of read when I'm skiing with Corey is I watch his head, his helmet. His helmet tells me where he's going. So that's, that's telegraphing to me where we're gonna go. I just kind of watch the way his head moves and watch the way his body language is. And that's kind of the unwritten part of how things happen with Corey and I. There's a lot of unspoken things that happen on the hill. And again, it's about reading the body language. And, and it's almost like a dance. As two people on the dance floor dance together, two people dancing with one common uh, result, very similar to what happens with Corey and I. Corey and I are linked together physically and theoretically with one common result. 
Um, we're, we're responding to each other and we're, we're responding for each other with the common goal of making some, some fun happen on the hill. Isabel had a great day and throughout the season I've been working with her every Saturday um, and I've really seen this huge growth in her skiing this year, especially that day. She's a very independent person. Uh, it's a lot of fun to ha be around and um, she just really enjoys being on the snow. She loves going fast, you know, and I tend to sing a lot and she says she hates it. Maybe she does. I don't know. <laughs> but um, that day she was just having a blast and she definitely likes skiing with visitors like yourself and she likes to talk to other people besides just me, I guess. <laughs> Jen said that I was um, doing really well and um, she was being real loud um, <laughs> on the mountain. Um, <laughs> yes, she was. Um, anyways, um, um, Jen was hot and I wasn't. Yeah, and we went down the we went down the hill ten times, and then now I'm here. <laughs> oh, I didn't know what to say. Will, when he first started, was we had to use tethers. We had to put tethers around his boots to help control his steering, to help control his speed, um, and and just for a safety concern. And and I've worked with Will now for four years. And last year he went tether free and this year has been completely tether free. Um, we've even worked more on directional control and stability. And like I said during the lesson that you filmed, completely having him side by side skiing, not following follow the leader method, just completely out on his own, just listening to the verbal commands so that when he skis with his father or his mother or friends, they can just say, okay, Will, go left, turn right, go ahead and stop. And he'll be able to understand those commands. So. Those have been the huge milestones for Will this year. Hey, there it is. You doing, Will? You doing, boss? <laughs> How you doing, uh, boss? You doing? Good. Get away on that thing. Adaptive <laughs> sports and recreation allow the health benefits of exercise to extend to people with disabilities. Uh, this might include the well-known benefits of exercise, such as weight control, strength, flexibility, and other uh, benefits. We might see this with uh, adaptive sports including hiking, skiing, and kayaking. We also see improvement in neurologic conditions which might include uh, improving balance, fine and gross motor coordination, and cognitive skills. Our stand-up skiers improve uh, balance in their entire body while our sit-down skiers can improve balance in their upper body as well as uh, increasing coordination with their arms using outriggers for skiing. A patient like Corey who has MS enjoys skiing for the love of skiing, but he's able to reap the health benefits of exercise, including improved coordination while being out with his family and tearing down the mountain or catching some air in the park. <laughs> um, that started with um, a thought where I tried to coax my lead instructor to do it, and he was crazy enough to join in. We have to be careful with that. Obviously, when we're on a lesson out here, there's a, there's a certain level of responsibility involved. We're responsible to each other. I'm responsible for myself. I'm responsible for Corey. But every once in a while, it, it's like anybody. We all have the desire to kind of do something a little bit on the wild side occasionally. And uh, yeah, we'll get to the point where if things are going good, we'll decide to go off of one of the jumps uh, and we'll up the ante a little bit and have some fun, have some fun and, and do something a little bit crazy. So yeah, once in a while that, that does happen. Limitations are what you make of it and that's what people make of it. People with limitations don't have to stop doing things. They just have to do things a little bit differently. And that's what with a disability doesn't mean inability and it's nice to show a community that hey, this is somebody's, it just has to be enabled in another way. And then the community watches that and the community wants to get involved. It's visibility. It's, it's integration. It's a lot of things. So yes, is it important to the community? Great. It's important to our community, the, the, the adaptive or disabled community, but I think it's important to the community at large as well to, to have access um, 
to seeing people out there doing, recreating, having fun, doing things that they might not have deemed that they could do. So that's, that's pretty important.